you've got your Bibles this morning, you might like to take them out. And uh, any guesses where we're going to be heading? Finished, of course, our series through Acts uh, last week. So we're going to actually be heading to the book of uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke this morning. Luke chapter 2. As you do that, I just want to uh, just acknowledge the creative team as well, uh, who have been hard at work just preparing the uh, Christmas display. And uh, yeah, let's acknowledge them. And of course, the, uh, the, the silhouettes on the windows you may have noticed driving past on, the, uh, on that side of the building. I know they've been in here a lot, really uh, just um, seeking the Lord about what he's saying, how to uh, express that creatively. And I know that a lot of time and effort and energy has gone into that. So I just wanted to acknowledge uh, that creative team uh, for all the work that's gone into it. Thanks for blessing the church in that way. Well, here we are, just like that, and it's December. Christmas only 13 sleeps away, I think Nicole said in the notices, which uh, is hard to believe. I don't know how many of us are are kind of up to date with our Christmas shopping or it's going to be a, a mad rush over the next couple of weeks. But also, just like that, we finished our series through the book of Acts last week. And uh, this morning, as I was kind of preparing for the service, it was kind of a little bit strange to not be just going to the book of Acts. It was like, where to from here? You know, you kind of, if you're on a journey and your GPS runs out of battery, your phone runs out of battery, and you're like, where do we go from here? But thankfully, uh, there's plenty of other places we can go in Scripture. Praise God for that. So Luke chapter 2. And uh, we're going to be just starting in verse 8 this morning, and I might pray as we begin. So Father, as we come to your word this morning, thank you that it is indeed alive, living and active. Lord, I pray this morning as we we read these uh, probably well-known words, Lord God, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, they would come alive afresh this morning in our hearts, I pray. Lord God, we never want to just approach your word with a uh, casual attitude of being over familiar with everything, Lord God. But give us fresh eyes to to see and and fresh ears to hear today, I pray. And would you be honored and glorified in all that uh, I say, in all that we do, Lord, and Jesus, would you be magnified. I ask all these things in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. It'll be a shorter message this morning, hopefully. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. As it had been told them. So, Here we are this morning, and of course, I I sort of want to bring a little bit of a Christmas focus, if you hadn't already picked that up today. And uh, it's obviously a very well-known story. I'm sure many of us here would have heard, read over this particular passage many times before. And I want to encourage us this morning. You know, it's easy to become a little bit over-familiar perhaps with some aspects of Christmas, of the coming of, of Jesus. Perhaps it's, 
you know, in the busyness of the tiredness of this time of year, it can be kind of easy to just, you know, keep carrying on with our day-to-day lives, just keep getting through, keep getting through to the end of the year without stopping to pause and reflect. Perhaps it's easy to, to kind of lose the wonder when there's been that familiarity over many, many years. I want to encourage us this morning. Can we guard against being over-familiar? Can we come with fresh eyes this morning? Can we come with open hearts as we kind of look at a few things from this account? In my house, uh, we've kind of come into a bit of a tradition over these last few years as, as our kids have got a little bit older. And uh, of course, it's Advent season. And so we have this Advent, uh, it's not really a calendar, it's more like an Advent activity. And each day, uh, st- my wife Steph has done it up very nicely and in little envelopes, and you open up the envelope for the date, and you look in at the particular word that, that just tells the story of Christmas, tells the story of Jesus, and it has a, a particular word that will, um, the, the, the scripture passage will, will be uh, consistent with, and you can read through it, and then the kids over the years have done these artworks that correspond with the particular day, and we stick it up in our entryway, and it just proclaims and tells this story of Jesus and of Christmas and of why he came. And uh, it's just been a real blessing and a wonderful opportunity as our kids have got older to kind of explain and to lay out and convey the truth of Scripture and why Jesus came, what's the significance of, of light and what's the significance of the angels coming to proclaim and bring this announcement. And it's actually a really good way to not become just over familiar with the story because you have to kind of think of ways that you can explain it and, and make it come alive for our young children. So I pray today that we would stop and behold Jesus afresh, that we would stop and reflect on the significance that his coming means for us. And so there are just a few things that I want to encourage us in, things that perhaps won't be earth-shattering or, or paradigm-shifting from us for us. Maybe they will be. But I pray that they would be things that we can grab a hold of afresh this morning and carry with us as we come into Christmas. So, as we read this account of Jesus' birth being proclaimed by the angel to these poor and lowly shepherds, the first thing that was emphasized, the first thing that I want to bring out this morning is this. The angel said to them, fear not, fear not. These are wonderful words that we find so often throughout Scripture, don't we? We can look at accounts all through of perhaps Abraham or Moses or even just as we've looked at over the last few weeks, uh, Paul in, in prison where there was a number of occasions where the Lord appeared to him and says, Fear not. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't fret. Don't be anxious. These are words of, of comfort and words of of peace for us this morning. And they're words so common in Scripture, I believe, because they can reveal our human tendency towards fear or fretting or being anxious over various things that may be happening all around us or happening in our own lives as well. The angel, the first thing that he emphasized, he says, fear not. Fear not. Just this past week, I've been reflecting or meditating on uh, Psalm chapter 37, just a few verses that I feel the Lord's put on my heart a number of days this week. And it starts with, do not fret because of evildoers. Do not fret. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid of the, the darkness, the things that may be happening all around. And it goes on to say, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. I've been reflecting on that this week. Do not fret. Trust in the Lord. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. And this morning I want to ask us, where are you dwelling? Where are you pitching your tent, as it were? Are you dwelling in the land, representing his, his presence, the peace and contentment that comes from being secure in him? Or are you dwelling in the place of fear and doubt, and worry, and being anxious about many things. I believe this promise, 
this proclamation that the angel made in this account in Luke's gospel here. Fear not. That is something for us here today that we can grab hold of. And as part of that as well, what are we feeding on? Are we feeding on His faithfulness? In the current climate of the world that we live in, in a time where there's this prevailing atmosphere of fear that abounds, it's easy to dwell in that place or to feed on that or to get all caught up in that. But this Christmas, we can grab hold of this promise, this encouragement and this exhortation for us to fear not. To fear not. Why? Why is that? Because of this proclamation and arrival of good news. And so the second thing emphasized here in this proclamation was, Behold, I bring you good news. Good news. I don't know what you might be like. Perhaps you like being across the news all the time in, in previous workplaces I've worked in, in uh, diff- different public service departments. I've had opportunity to work at times, filling in up in Parliament House in ministers' offices. And something that they always have on up there is the news, just like on multiple different channels, running through the news all day. And like by the time you get through the end of the day, you hear the same stories over and over and over again. And it's kind of a little bit, little bit frustrating. But certainly in this day and age that we live, we have access to 24-7 news, don't we? Whether it's on our phones, whether it's on our, the internet, on our TVs. And I don't know about you, but in this season, I've kind of been just keeping an arm's length a little bit from the news. Not keeping my head in the sand, no, I still catch up on what I need to. But just, just trying to, to not have this atmosphere of, of fear and all that sort of stuff being weighing me down. And there's all sorts of stuff going on. There's fake news, bad news, depressing news. But at Christmas... We remember the coming of Jesus is good news. In fact, it's the best news of all because God has sent the greatest gift to meet the greatest need of humanity. And we're, of course, in a time where Christmas gifts perhaps are being organized in, our, in our, my family, my wife's family and mine. We kind of have a bit of a secret Santa thing where you buy one gift for someone and Someone buys a gift for you. And so there's always kind of clandestine things happening in the background, like trying to find out what does this person need? What what this person like? What's the need of this person? What can I get them that's actually going to be, you know, a decent gift? And in fact, yesterday, my uh, young little uh, daughter, Esther, she's just two and a little bit. She was hungry. She wanted some food. And she said, can I have some crackers and chippies, Daddy? I said, well, I want to do the healthy thing. So I said, well, maybe you can have a cracker. And she said to me, no, Daddy, I need chippies. And I was like, whoa, you need chippies? I have to teach between needs and wants, I guess, at some point. But God knows what we need. Our greatest need is peace with God. It's for our sins to be forgiven. For there to be a way to salvation. The greatest gift God has given to meet our greatest need. The angel says, behold. In other words, take note of this. Focus your attention of this. I bring you good news. And it's good news because those who are in darkness have now seen a great light. Those who were once lost have one who has searched for and found and rescued them. Those bound in all manner of chains, stuck in the prison of sin and shame, now have one who would come to bring liberty, to set captives free. And it's good news because it's for all the people. It's not just for the the rich and mighty. It's not just for those who have it all together, those deemed worthy. The shepherds, of course, were the outcasts of society. They were deemed unclean. They were um, poor and lowly. Yet here they are receiving this announcement of the good news of Jesus. I don't know where you're at this morning, here in this room, online, through the live stream. Perhaps you feel unworthy. Perhaps you feel distant 
from the Lord. Oh, I pray that each and every heart would know afresh the good news of Jesus today. That is for all people, the near and far. It's good news. The grace and the love and the mercy of God, the gift of salvation through Jesus is for all the people. For us, let's not become over familiar with this good news. Let's not keep it at arm's length. But let's remember the good news of Jesus, the good news of salvation, the good news that God Almighty looked upon our lowly, helpless state and gave us a gift, one who would lift us out. And so surely this leads to great joy. The angels proclaim, fear not, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. We sing at this time, joy to the world because the Lord has come. And, and I believe that this, this true sense of joy, biblical joy, is an underrated or undervalued or perhaps even an uncommon quality in our serious modern lives. Maybe it's just me. But you know that the Bible actually has much to say about joy. In Nehemiah, we read that the joy of the Lord is to be our strength. Throughout the Psalms, we read on many different occasions, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord evermore rejoice. Paul in Philippians, of course, writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And I've realized something afresh recently. And that's that there must be a place for joy in our lives. For joy in our lives. The joy of the Lord. Recently, my wife and I, we uh, were just uh, watching some uh, television one night. And we came across this, this uh, comedy hour show by Jerry Seinfeld. And uh, it was a... Comedy, kind of for me, I love laughing, I love humor, but so much of the comedy out there these days, it seems, people think they've got to be so rude or so crass or just full of foul language for it to be funny. I don't find that funny at all. But this particular show, we just thought we'd, we'd have a little bit of a watch. It was a recent one done in New York. And um, it was just masterful situational comedy. There was no language or smartiness or anything like that. It was... It was hilarious. I've ne I have not laughed that hard for quite a while. This, this, you know, that kind of laugh where you feel in pain, like your chest hurts, your belly hurts. Like, it was, it was just hilarious. It was just good for the soul, if, if you know what I mean. My wife and I could hardly speak. We were laughing that much. And through that... I just, I just in, the, in the days that followed, I really felt the Lord just kind of speak to me through that, just reminding me of the importance of joy in our lives, the importance of not taking myself too seriously, as I'm prone to do from time to time, the importance of having a sense of joy in Him. And of course, it's, it's great to have a good laugh in the natural. I love that as much as anyone. But what about the joy of of our salvation. The joy of our salvation. You know, David writes in, in Psalm 51, you know, restore to me the joy of my salvation. And I'm not sure where each and every one of you may be at this morning, but I, I feel perhaps this morning that there are some here for whom that applies. You're like, you know what? I want to cry out to God this morning. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Perhaps you've been doing it tough. Perhaps there's been various struggles and things going on in your life or, of course, all around us. But I believe this morning that there is an invitation and a drawing as we consider this passage, as we consider just the good news of Jesus, that there is an invitation for fresh joy, for, for the joy of our salvation being restored or renewed in our hearts and our lives this morning. In Isaiah 61, verse 2 and 3, I love this. It talks about the fact that the coming Messiah, Jesus, would be the one who comforts all who mourn, 
who would bring beauty instead of ashes, who would bring the oil of gladness instead of mourning, who would bring the garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. This is who our God is. And this Christmas, I pray for us as his people that where there's been a a spirit of heaviness, that the Lord would come afresh and bring the garment of praise, would bring the oil of joy and gladness instead of mourning. For it is indeed good news of great joy for all the people, for all of us here this morning, whether you feel you're doing great or whether you feel you're not. It's good news of great joy for us today. So as we approach Christmas, rather than just kind of glossing over it, oh, we've just got to get through and it's a busy time of year, let's get through it and then we'll take a breath after that. Rather than losing the wonder, keeping on carrying on our merry way, let's remember that we do not have to fear. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace. Let's remember the good news of the gospel. He's still saving, he's still setting captives free. He's still healing, still opening blind eyes. And let's remember this good news, in fact, brings great joy. As the angel appeared to the shepherds, as the glory of God shone all around them, we can only imagine what would have been going through their minds as they're just sitting out there on the hillside. As they were proclaiming, the angel proclaimed the birth of the long-awaited Messiah. And as he was emphasizing the significance of what that would mean. As the angel heralded the the Savior's arrival, really it was an invitation to the shepherds. An invitation to these poor, lowly, outcast shepherds to see Jesus. This one who is indeed Savior and Lord. And I don't know, perhaps the shepherds, you know, would have been easy to be in that place of, oh, We can't go. We're not worthy. Oh, we've got so many sheep to look after. So much to do. Pretty busy keeping them all in line. It's night time. We're tired after a big day. No one would want us around anyway. But no, let's look at verse 15. What do they say? What's their response to this invitation? They say, let us go over to Bethlehem and see. Let us go and see. Let us go and see. And see. Brendan, are you able to just come up? Is that okay? This morning, maybe you're in a place where you feel tired, where you feel dry and and distant from the Lord. Maybe it's just a, a busy, stressful time of year. We've received this invitation, I believe. Let us go. And see. Let us go and see. Let us put aside the things that can keep us back. The busyness, the distraction, the familiarity even. Let us go and see. Let us look to Jesus afresh this morning. Let us look upon his beauty and his majesty. Let us receive afresh his mercy. And let us remember that because of Jesus, we can fear not. We can know And we can walk in and we can proclaim this good news. And in him we can know true and lasting joy. The joy of our salvation. In verse 20 we read that the shepherds went and they saw. They went and they saw. They beheld Jesus and then they responded to the invitation. And then it says they came back glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. That's a beautiful picture. I believe that when we see Jesus, when we encounter him, we are changed. We come back different. We come back glorifying and praising the Lord. May he be praised and glorified in the lives of his people in this Christmas season. May we as his people fear not. Fear not. May we as his people remember the good news, the good news of Jesus. And may we live with a sense of great joy. And in this season, may we go and see afresh 
May we turn our hearts afresh to behold Jesus. Would you stand this morning? prayer teams today? Yes. The prayer teams just like to come forward at this point if you're on the team this morning. Bring our service to a close. Of course, there's no need to rush away. There's the cafe. But particularly, we've got the baptisms just happening not long after the service this morning. Love to see uh, the number of you hang around. This morning I'm going to pray to see what the Lord wants to do. I want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for our time together, Lord. Thank you for just your presence with us. I thank you, Lord, for just that proclamation all those years ago, the angel Announcing your coming, your arrival, Jesus, to those shepherds. That what was emphasized was, fear not. I bring you good news of great joy. And I pray for us this morning, where there is fear, where there is worry, where there is anxiety, Lord, I pray by your Spirit, we would fear not we would cast our cares upon you Lord that Lord as we approach Christmas that we would remember and even remind ourselves afresh of the good news of Jesus that you came that you made a way we thank you Lord and I pray this morning Lord that there would be just a a release, a stirring of, of great joy in our hearts. That, Lord, you would restore to us the joy of our salvation, Lord, where that's needed this morning. That you would lift off, Lord, a spirit of heaviness today, where that may be the case, Lord God. That you would bring your joy that's not dependent upon our circumstances, what's going on around us, how we may be feeling, but is grounded Firmly and anchored in you and in all that you have done, Lord Jesus. I pray that we would see you afresh today. We would draw near to you, Lord. As we go from here today, I pray that we would be aware of your presence, that we would go with great joy, that we would turn our gaze and our hearts towards you afresh, Lord God. I bless each and every person here with your peace, with your presence, and with the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, as we just partake of these baptisms this afternoon too, I pray for those four people, Lord, that you would really pour out your Spirit upon them, Lord. This would be such a significant, joyful moment, Lord. A real marker in the, in the sand, a line in the sand, Lord God. It changes everything, Lord God. We bless that time. Come and have your way there as well, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.